Good morning. My name is Russ McCullough. I'm with the Archdale Church of Christ in Charlotte, North Carolina. And every Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, we have a Bible study at the Panera Bread in Matthews, North Carolina, which is located on Highway 51 and Highway 74 East Expressway at that intersection. It's right in front of the Target store. And if you're familiar with the area, it's right across the street from the Harris Teeter and the shopping center where you'll find uh, the Texas Roadhouse, a great steakhouse uh, to eat at. Well, this is a public square Bible study. Typically, we sit in the middle of the restaurant and have a Bible study every 10 o'clock morning at Tuesday. And we're currently studying the book of Hebrews, so we can't be there in person right now because of the virus, but we are going to be with you virtually here today. We're actually going to study Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4. We're going through the book of Hebrews, but we're in Hebrews chapter 11, so there's a lot of stops and starts, so to speak, but we want to talk about specifically the faith of the first person in the Hall of Faith. What a great honor to be the first person mentioned by the Hebrew writer as being an example of faith. You know, uh, it's hard to do great things in life, but perhaps the hardest thing in life to do is to be the first one to do whatever it might be. The first person to set sail across the ocean thinking that the world was flat and that if you sailed too far you'd drop off the edge how'd you like to be on the first ship uh, to try to prove that to be not the case or the first man in america to fly into outer space alan shepherd uh, a lot of people follow alan shepherd but somebody had to be the first and it was him so these things uh, really take on a lot of meaning when you think about the very first person that ever did whatever you might be talking about. Abel is the first one noted in Hebrews 11 as having the kind of faith that God is looking for from us all. And Abel is our prototype, if you please, of the faithful person because he was the very first to exercise the kind of faith God is looking for. And so let's read Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. That is a volume of history and theology in a single verse. God has a way of saying so much with so few words. It's really amazing to witness it. It causes us to sit back in, in awe that God can make something so massive and complicated so succinct and easy to understand and grasp. And yet he does, time and time again. But this man of faith, this very first man, the, the prototype of faith, if you please, 
I want us to just briefly look at that and and see what he's really talking about. He talks about by faith. Faith is one of those things that we speak of often almost, well, haphazardly. We, It's just a word we see a lot in the Bible, and we see it, we read it, we move on to the next bright and shiny thing that we can find. It might be a little unusual. But faith is... Well, so essential, and it is so marvelous, and this man is the very first one to exemplify it, by faith, by faith. What does the Hebrew writer mean when he says, by faith? Well, we can't help but go back to what he's already uh, described. He's described faith in two ways. Uh, sort of two sides to a coin. There's a, a positive side and a negative side. And we want to look at these two aspects that define faith to the Hebrew writer before he gets to Hebrews 11 and starts naming examples. He names examples after he's defined what he's talking about, and then these names illustrate what he's already defined. And he defines it in two ways, a negative and a positive. So first of all, the faith to the Hebrew writer he's talking about here is that it is exemplified by Abel is as he's just noted previously. The one who lives by faith is one who does not shrink back. And the author gives a number of examples of what does it mean to shrink back? What does it mean to backslide? What does it mean to surrender our faith back to Satan? Well, it means a number of things. First of all, as if you go back to verses 32 to 36 of chapter 10, you'll see um, the examples or the definition, if you please, of the one who shrinks back, the one who slides back, the one who becomes apostate, if you please. Well, first of all, uh, the one who shrinks back is one who uh, becomes by choice, once again, unenlightened. He ceases to be enlightened by the word of God and becomes unenlightened. The light goes out, as it were. The one who shrinks back is the one who has quit enduring. It's just too much for me. I'm just going to give up. A shrinker is a one who is not enlightened and does not endure. And a shrinker is one who ceases his partnership with God and becomes partners once again with Satan and evil. One who shrinks back is uh, one who has no compassion especially compassion of the soul. The one who shrinks back is without joy. The one who shrinks back clings to uh, this world of passing possessions. The one who shrinks back is without confidence in God's ability to save him. And he's finally a one who shrinks back as one who no longer has a promise. He has no confidence. He has no promise. He's just lost again. The one who shrinks back is lost again because he's re-embraced all those things he was before he was baptized. Now, we have said that there's two aspects of faith. There's a negative and a positive. What are the positive aspects of this faith that is exemplified by this man Abel? First of all, uh, he had an assurance of the hope of heaven. He also 
saw the unseen as real and eternal and he also saw that which is seen as something temporal and an illusion the world that we experience and know and live in every day is soon passing away and Abel was able to see that so Abel was able to see his hope of heaven he was able to embrace the unseen things of God as reality and eternal and he was able to disengage himself from those things that were temporal and temporary yet we could see those with our eyes but one day both the things that we see and the eyes that we see them with will be gone so that's the the kind of faith that uh, we're talking about here a faith that Abel on the one hand said I am rejecting my past life and embracing a better one in God and second of all he was able to see the unseen Cain on the other hand was opposite of Abel uh, he definitely embraced the advantages so-called of sin and rejected the faith of God Cain also was one that embraced what was seen and scoffed at the things that weren't seen this lack of sight this lack of faith uh, caused um, him to do the unthinkable and um, we want to look at that we want to look at Abel and why his act of faith is so commended by the Hebrew writer again he's the first one so commended Abel uh, he's What can we say? He's the first victim of a murder in the history of the world. No one had been murdered before, and no one had really even thought about it. But Cain, because he had already rejected God wholesale, Satan was able to cause him to be tempted to murder and he fell for that temptation so if you'll turn your Bible to Genesis 4 we'll just briefly read the account of uh, Cain and Abel now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain saying I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord and again she bore his brother Abel now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn his flock and their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. And then, of course, we know what happened next, that Cain slew his brother Abel. Abel was the first victim of a murder. And yet he's commended by the Hebrew writer as being the first person that exemplifies the kind of faith that God is looking for. 
the kind of faith that turns its back on who we used to be before we were baptized and a faith that embraces the unseen reality of eternity and rejecting the seen illusion of this world. That's what faith is all about. That's what Abel was all about. Now, let's just note a, a couple of things here before we go. And that is that Abel not only had faith in God, uh, he understood that being faithful went hand in hand with being obedient. In fact, uh, Abel said, as it were, I can't be I can't be faithful if I'm not obedient. Now what was uh, Abel obedient to? He was obedient to the pattern of sacrifice for worship and you might say well what pattern well it was set forth this pattern of worship was set forth by his parents Adam and Eve in the garden and you might say well how in the world could that be well in Genesis 3 Adam and Eve attempted to cover their own sins with fig leaves. Didn't work. God called them out for the sin that they had and exposed it. And Adam and Eve had excuses. But at the end of the day, God decided to uh, forgive them but they would be punished for their sins and their punishment was death they began dying that very day and one day they both were physically dead but in the course of that forgiveness God covered their sins how with the skin of an animal according to Genesis 3 now, how do you get an animal skin? You kill an animal, and you take its skin, and the blood of the animal is shed. Adam and Eve had never known death, death of anything. And here is God in front of them, as it were, killing an animal, draining the carcass of his blood, and taking the skin of this animal and covering them with it, covering their nakedness, which was, I guess you might say, metaphorical of their sin. They witnessed this, and so they knew ongoing that animal sacrifice was God's way of explaining to these early people the heinousness of sin and how to bring forgiveness for it. It contained an animal sacrifice. Blood had to be shed and the carcass placed upon an altar. This was taught to them by their parents. Uh, there's no way that they could not know this. Now, why was Cain's sacrifice unacceptable and Abel's was? Well, Abel followed the pattern of animal sacrifice. Cain did not. Cain, being a farmer, wanted to substitute a sacrifice of his own choosing, which was products of his farm. God rejected it, not because he rejected Cain per se, not because he rejected his sacrifice per se. It was rejected because it wasn't obedient. It didn't fit the pattern. But Abel did. He did as God commanded in every way. And he's commended for it. And so we see a number of things about the faith of Abel that still speaks today. 
It says that faith embraces that which is unseen. Number two, faith is obedient. And number three, faith requires obedience to go along with it. You can't be faithful without obedience, and you can't be obedient without faithfulness. The two go hand in hand. And so this is why Abel continues to speak. This is because he was the first one who's noted as being faithful in the Bible. And he was faithful because he was obedient. And Cain was not. Cain has now become synonymous with sin and fallenness. Cain was an evil man. And he did an evil thing. And he paid the price. Abel, though dead, still speaks. So that's our lesson today from the book of Hebrews. We need to remember righteous Abel. He was commended as being able because, uh, or faithful because he was obedient. And he was obedient because he was faithful. Faith and obedience cannot be separated. Abel, on the other hand, I mean, uh, Cain, on the other hand, wanted to create his own standard of righteousness. He wanted to sacrifice, but he wanted to sacrifice what he wanted to sacrifice. He wanted to be obedient to God, but only as he defined it. Well, these things don't work with God didn't work with Cain and it won't work for us either so thank you for being here today at the Panera Bread Bible Study Hour that's always at 10 o'clock on every Tuesday and Lord willing soon we'll meet again in person at the Panera Bread in Matthews my name is Russ McCullough and if you need to render obedience to the gospel by repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, please call me. 704-756-2277 is my number. Or you can text me at that same number. Or you can just simply reply by way of a message here on Facebook. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, we render assistance to you if you live in the Charlotte area that uh, you can render obedience to the gospel. Uh, but if you don't live in Charlotte, uh, call me anyway. We'll make sure we put you in touch with somebody close to where you are. And we, again, appreciate your presence and look forward to seeing you again soon. And God bless you today, wherever you might be. Goodbye.